Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to go ahead and start into stoichiometry 2.4, and this is going back to learning goal 2.02, .02, which tells me I can determine the empirical and molecular formula for a given compound when given combustion data. Ooh, combustion, I made a little mistake there, a little typo, but that's okay. We're going to keep it moving. Now, one of the things that you want to pay very close attention to is there are some skills that we need to build into getting to this, uh, this little part. And the first one that we're actually going to deal with is called percent composition. Now, when we're trying to find out our grades for a class or, you know, tests, different things like that, we usually do however many points we receive divided by the total and then multiply that by 100. We're going to utilize that same idea here as we look at percent composition, but we're going to change it up just a little bit. If I'm looking at an overall compound, say magnesium hydroxide, I want to find out, okay, for this compound, what percentage of it is actually oxygen? I'm going to do a very similar uh, type of calculation, but instead now I have to utilize the molar mass. Molar mass, which we saw in the last video, if you need to review that. Um, also, there's practice on noodles, just in case you need a little uh, refresher on uh, molar mass. Go ahead and back and uh, take a look at those. Now, if I'm using molar mass, like I did before my little table, I have magnesium, oxygen, hydrogen. Those are the three elements I know are involved. Now, looking at my formula, I know that I have one magnesium, two oxygen, and two hydrogen. I know this because if I look at the top here, oops, I think I ran out of, there we go. As I look at the top here, I notice I have this subscript 2 right outside here. That lets me know that I have to multiply it by everything inside the parentheses. So, take my mass of the element from my periodic table, and I'm going to multiply it by the mass that I have, or by the number of moles. So, 1 times 24.31, 2 times 16 and 2 times 1.01. .01. Once I get that value, I'm going to go ahead and add it all up. And that's where I come out with my molar mass for the compound, 58.33. Now, to get the percent composition, especially to answer the question in terms of oxygen, I need to now take the part, which is going to be my mass of oxygen. Oops, here we go. And I need to divide it by the whole, which is my 58.33. So, let's see what we're going to look at. Oops. I think we lost something here. So, in the process, I'm going to go ahead and do this, do my math right here. If I take my 32 grams, oops, ran out of space. I'll come over to the other side. I keep running out of space. Oh no. All right, 32, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide it by my 58.33. Take this value that I get and then multiply it by 100. So I'll put this, have to work my way down. I'm sorry. Once I get this, I'm going to find out that oxygen accounts for 54.86% of my total mass here. Now, of course, on a much larger screen, having a little bit more space, maybe I'll make a few more things work here. But the general idea remains the same. Part divided by whole multiplied by 100. This is going to give us our percent composition. Now, this is all well and good when we have all the parts given to us. Now, for practice, let me go back a second. For practice, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and figure out the mass percent for magnesium and for hydrogen. Using the same principles, make sure you have it. Make sure you show them to me. I want to make sure that's clear. Make sure after you've watched the video, you've gone through and you showed them to me. Make sure they're correct. I don't want you going on and practicing the wrong thing. Now, what happens when you're not necessarily given the whole idea or the, the whole piece of information? So, if we have the empirical formula, empirical formula, which is the whole number ratio, the simplest whole number ratio that we can have to describe the compound, we have to go through a couple other steps. Now, these steps will include things like this. Now, if you're given a compound, regular basic compound, just like we have here, we have, um, this is going to be ethyne. If we're looking at this compound, we notice that it's C2H4. Now, as I look at both of those subscripts, I can divide those by the same number. We will call that, if you go back to your math, the LCM, or least common multiple. We're still bringing those concepts back. Now, I can divide both of those numbers by 2. So, what I'm going to do is, to find my empirical formula, is I'm going to divide both of my subscripts by 2, 
and that'll give me a empirical formula of CH2. Now, can I use the empirical formula to find out what the molecular compound or molecular formula would be for the compound? If I just have that alone, that will not be enough. If I just have the empirical formula alone, that will not be enough information for me to actually go ahead to get the molecular formula. So, how do I go about doing that? In order to do this, we're going to look at an example. Now, the composition of adipic acid is 49.3% carbon, 6.9% hydrogen, and 43.8% oxygen by mass. So, it's looking at the overall, it's, it's, if we took this compound and sent it through and um, were able to decompose it, we're able to look at it and then find how much of each of these things we actually have. Now, it also gives another little piece of information. It says the molar mass of this compound is 146 grams per mole. We're going to save that part for last. Now, since we don't have actual masses, but we know that this is a percentage by mass, what we're going to do is we're going to be allowed to assume that the percentages are the same number in grams. So, when we look at this, we're looking at the fact that 49.3 grams, 6.9 grams, and 43.8 grams. We're looking at these values as though they are grams. Now, step one, once we have this assumption made, we need to convert these into moles. How do we do that? Going back to another video, you're going to see that we need to divide it by the molar mass of the compound. So that's what you're actually seeing being done here. Since I'm dealing with 49.3 grams carbon, oops, I forgot to put that in there, the next thing I need to do is I need to divide it by overall my molar mass, which is 12.01. Take that and divide it, I get 4.10 moles carbon. I'm going to do the same thing for my hydrogen and for my oxygen, each one dividing by the molar mass and receiving out my mole values. Now, how can I use these moles of different compounds in order to determine the whole number, a simplest whole number ratio. Step two, I need to divide these values by the smallest of the three values. Okay, so what I have here, I have 4.10, 6.83, and 2.73. So 2.73 is the smallest, so I'm going to take each of them and divide it by 2.73. Once I do that, I end up with these values. Now, one of the things that we want to make sure of is as we're making um, doing our calculations that we are very, very close. So usually if it's within a tenth, that means we're on the right path to be able to get um, a whole number ratio out of it. Um, we can then round it to, say, one or something like that. If it is further than that, then usually we're going to want to multiply it by some number in order to get it closer to the value of a whole number. So once we've done this, we look at the math and we see we have 1.5, 2.5 and 1. These are not whole numbers, but by multiplying them by 2, we're able to get whole numbers. This is going to lead us to our empirical formula. So now since I have 1.5 multiplied by 2, that gives me a value of 3. That means that I'm going to have 3 carbon in my empirical formula. 2.5 times 2, this means I'm going to have five hydrogen present in my empirical formula. And two times one, I'm going to have two oxygen present in my empirical formula. So once we've multiplied, yay, we have our empirical formula. We can celebrate. We can party. Almost. Now, since we have our empirical formula, we have to go back now. We have one final step. Okay? Our one final step is this. In the beginning, we were given 146 grams per mole as the molar mass of the molecular compound. So we need to take one more step in order to figure out what exactly our, I'm sorry, our molecular formula is going to be. Now, this is actually going to be fairly easy. So we need to use the information we got from our empirical formula to now get our molecular formula. How are we going to go about doing this? First, we need our molar mass of our empirical formula. So, setting up my table, and of course, many of you will not use the table, and that's perfectly fine. I use it as a way to check myself and make sure everything's in line. 
So, after going through this whole process, I see that my molar mass is 73.08. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide my molecular mass, which was given to me, my 146, by my 73.08. And this is going to give me approximately 1.99, which is close enough for us to call it 2. Now, in order to get my actual molecular formula, that means now I have to take my entire empirical formula and multiply it by 2. So 2 times 3 carbon will give me 6. 2 times 5 will give me 10. 2 times 2 will give me 4. And this will be my molecular formula. Now, we're going to do a lot more practice with these in class. This is going to be a worksheet. I guess you really call it 2.4. But take your time. Look back over this example. I know it's a whole lot of information coming at you fast. And so if you have questions, make sure you write them down. If you don't write them down, I can't come into your head and figure it out. So if there's so much that you just can't get it, write the last thing that made sense, and then we can work from there. But the goal is we want to get everything as close as possible and see if we can't move you along in this process. I bid you good night. Have a wonderful evening, and I will see you in class tomorrow.